Hey guys, this is Kirov speaking and today we are once again in the Unreal version of Automation. Another Unreal dev update. And as you can see, we no longer have a fugly as hell main menu. We just implemented a new one, which is a little bit more shiny, uh, still not finished. As you can see, the cast button is uh, like twice the size of everything else. Um, but it is functional too. So free roam and video player, workshop doesn't work, uh, credits and settings. And when, once you get in there, it all looks like crap, but uh, doesn't really matter, does it? So um, for now, it is reasonably functional and we don't have any buttons working or linked in here uh, apart from the sandbox mode and today we are going to check out a few rather pretty things that have been added since we last time looked at it and we are going to talk about their implications too so let's get into that as one would expect the uh, sandbox button brings us to the engine manager and uh, there are plenty of engines in here. I haven't cleaned them out in a long time. And uh, these are the engines that are just located in my normal automation folder, which I use for the non-Unreal version too. So these are not separate saves, but they are compatible. And if they will stay compatible, well, that remains to be seen. But anyway, we are today going to build a new family and Everything you are seeing in here, of course, is extremely preliminary. That warning is in order once again. The only thing we have in uh, the Unreal version of automation, is, oh, apart from really shiny things, um, the only engine types we have in here are V6s currently, and some of the V12 stuff is ver working already as well, because they are based upon the same bank angle yes and we are sharing bank angle uh, assets uh, for different engine types so v6 is 60 degrees and v12s are 60 degrees as well so let's build a um, an alzi engine and the only head type currently fully done is whoop there's a belt we shall remove said belt front cover whoop. Oh, that's new as well. I'm going to show that off later. So, okay, we are going to build a pushrod engine. And uh, I'll see head. Just choose standard stuff. And we ignore everything here. And then just go through here. And here we are with some interesting new additions. So, as you can see, the intake selection has changed quite a bit. And this is based on what will be the revamped version of the engine designer. The revamp will, will happen first when we are completely switched over to Unreal. But this, uh, of course, all the modeling has to be already done for that new version. These will not make it into the key engine version of the game, which you are currently playing and which will uh, be used for the next big update as well. What we are seeing here is the first instances of what is two big updates down the line. And if you are wondering what that means roughly in time-wise, well, we are looking at the um, shift over between 2016 and 17. So somewhere around Christmas, our goal, our ultimate goal is to um, get this version ready for you to try out around Christmas. So uh, anyway, what do we have here? Intakes, different intake styles. We have a standard intake, which should really be called compact. That is your engineers going about and saying like, we don't fucking care what intake we put on. Just put something on that makes it fit in the engine bay. It's, it's all good, it's all good. Just go for it. That doesn't flow that well and it doesn't have any optimized resonances. Resonances will be something new. I will link down below in the description the um, lengthy we a video I made about the upcoming um, engine designer revamp. And there's a lot of good stuff in there which you really should check out. Let me refocus the camera. That's already working nicely. Very good. So standard intake very should be called compact intake. That is when you don't care. 
Low end is when you do care about resonances and stuff, but want to have an engine optimized for the low RPM band. So you want to have your Helmholtz resonance nicely split up and one of those moved reasonably far down, like around 1500 RPM or around there somewhere. Depends on the engine size, of course, and all that will be calculated. But as you can see, it takes more space. If we go for mid-range, it takes even more space and look at how pretty it is. So this will be giving you a little boost in breathing and so on in resonances in the mid-range of uh, your power band. Performance? Yes, it gets more sporty here. That would be a real sports solution. It still has a proper filter in here somewhere. Yes, there it is. And uh, won't destroy your engine, just like the current performance um, solution you have in the current version of automation. And then, of course, we have race, and that gets shiny, and look at that. Isn't this beautiful? This is rather neat. And then we have a mixture between mid-range and low-end which is variable. So variable length intake runners uh, will help you optimize the engine, but they uh, don't perform at the individual spots as well as um, the mid-range or low end respectively. So plenty of new important options here. Um, and that should add quite a lot to gameplay once we have the engine designer revamp in the game. There, is m there are many more things than just that, of course, which will change the UI here quite a bit and um, give you more options to tune your engines, but also make it much more of a challenge to get a good compromise for an engine. Um, even less min-maxing than currently is in the game. I think we got rid of most of that. But of course you want to see more shinies, so what more shinies do we have? We can switch over to Twin. Twin is not really a thing for the compact one or even the low-end one, but in mid-range Twin makes sense, so that is modeled. Um, and it will be such that these options which aren't there just will be removed from the list box. So a Twin mid-range setup looks like this. A performance setup looks like this beefy thing here. And then we have the race setup. And <laughs> that's, that is pretty awesome. And you can see the throttle in there. It shouldn't be shiny really because there is no direct light shining on it. But yeah, uh, as I said, everything in here you see here is preliminary. And it's just starting to look really nice in some places. And yeah, that is um, that. Let's see, we also have a few solutions for throttle per cylinder. And again, that is not really a thing for low and standard, but maybe it is done for mid-range? No, it isn't. It's not even available for mid-range, but it comes in at performance. And here you see the individual throttle bodies and hooked up to some trumpets in plenum chambers. Uh, hooked up to their respective double intake airbox. Really neat. And the race one has a poor little carburetor box stuck in itself. Um, but, but I think these nicely curved trumpets should make up for that fact. Of course, again, that won't be there in uh, the next few versions. Um, let's talk a little bit about what we have changed to make our life easier because you can see like oh this must this looks so much better than in automation currently this must be a huge amount of work well it is a lot of work but we are making sure that we are minimizing the workload by making things very modular so we have only really done the intake stuff for some of the fuel systems for v6s but the v12 setup has the same bank angle and thus should be using the same assets. So what can we do in order to make it more modular? Well, we can just go here and switch over to V12. First of all, notice, damn, that changeover was really quick. Yes, 
the game is much more optimized in Unreal. Also, we haven't committed the same design decision uh, since as in our naive first implementations of the engine designer. The original one from like six, six or seven years ago. So yeah, you can see it just uses the same assets and lines them up. And <laughs> our little box here for the um, rogue carburetor intake is still there. And that is because it uses the exact same things. So if we go over to single race, you can see, well, that's perfect. We, we didn't actually make this one specifically. We just based this on the blueprints in uh, available with Unreal Engine and tell it to have middle pieces and end pieces. And because a V12 is, regarding its fuel system, is just uh, two V6s, that works perfectly. So uh, basically you only need to make um, fuel systems for inline engines, for V engines with 60 degrees, for V engines with um, 90 degrees, and then for boxes, flat engines, so 180 degrees. Well, this is a massive engine. <laughs> um, so if you want to launch your your rocket ship into space, then best base it on a multi-point fuel injection system with the configuration of twin rays. And you will be getting all the fun out of it. And lots of bloom, because you're going into space and you need bloom, as you can see here. Another thing I want to show you, which is currently a bit bugged, there should be a selection down this side of uh, the UI. So let us first switch back to V6s, because those are the only ones done, and continue working on those. So now we have to select the fuel system, we select super or something. Uh, wait a sec, this slider is still the wrong way around, and we need to have some fuel mixture which makes sense. And then the only exhaust type which is done currently is race exhaust. And you can see the shiny. If you want to put a nice race V6 into your car, then this would be it, I think. So these pretzels are having proper welds now and are just in general a little too shiny like some of these materials are as well. This is having too high a reflection, so what happens is you just see the lights on top as if you were looking straight into them, and that doesn't help. Anyway, let's uh, strip down the engine a little bit and see what it does. So here you have a selection on the side, on the right-hand side, where you can activate and deactivate stuff. And this is supposed to be visible always when you see the engine. And with that, so you ha no longer have a weird slider, but in uh, instead you have buttons to select. So you could just go and remove the bottom end. Oh, let's remove the block, only the block, and have everything else be there. So you can see we have the sump, we don't have the block, and then you see all shiny shiny explosions and the engine working isn't that nice so overall just lots more to look at and it's it's worth your time to spend a little on on just making making your eyes bleed from all the awesome engine porn in here well what about carburetors then because those are a little bit different and even more modular than uh, multi-point fuel injection is so yes they are in the new system saving us a lot of work because everything can be reused there are not as many options here in on the intake side but they are not great out there's basically only a low end and well it's this difference you can see here uh, one has longer runners and the other one has not the carburetors themselves are really modular, as you would expect. So single, dual, all fits on there. And let us switch over to V12s just to show the concept of that. And like I said, V12s haven't been modeled separately yet. This is just the uh, what comes out of the more modular system. So 
if we go and select triple carbs, you can see there, well, they are all aligning and they make sense there. If we go to single bar uh, barrel carbs, we have the option of uh, a single one. <laughs> Don't use this engine like that. That that will not be a pleasant experience. Um, but twin, triple, quad and hexa carbs. Yes, there you go. Uh, then we have the same stuff for twin, uh, two, uh, two barrel, I mean, and this one is a little offset, I would say, but um, it's all using the same assets. It uses an end piece, an end piece, and then just fills out the middle. So this saves us a lot of work. And you can see here, there, the middle pieces are definitely missing. <laughs> this isn't finished yet, but uh, you can see it working already. At least to some extent. And then, of course, who doesn't want to have the four-barrel race version? Or oh, let's go for six carburetor and race trumpets. Alright, guys, I hope you enjoyed and have taken in all the uh, pretties of this update of the Unreal version. There is still so much more to do and it's all far from finished, very far from finished. But things are looking rather decent, I have to say. So, uh, hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.